Hi, I'm Sarah Maurer, and today I'm going to be telling you about early metabolisms and how metabolisms evolved into what we see today. When we think about all life on Earth, we divide it into how it metabolizes matter. So essentially, we divide it into chemotrophs, which are the organisms that survive on chemical energy, and phototrophs, the organisms that survive on light energy. And in the chemotroph bran branches, we have heterochemotrophs, which survive off of um, an electron acceptor that is usually something like oxygen. Um, and then we have chemoautotrophs. And in chemoautotrophs, carbon dioxide is going to serve as our carbon source instead of something like sugar, which is obviously derived from our photoautotrophs. And so in this chemoautotrophic design, CO2 would be produced from early Earth chemical reactions, like minerals reacting with water, um, or just from the formation of planets in our solar system. And so we would have the carbon dioxide floating around in the atmosphere or perhaps dissolved into the oceans. And our chemoautotrophs are going to turn this into reduced carbon. So that's what we're going to talk about today, how carbon gets turned into reduced carbon through chemoautotrophy. Obviously, this is a carbon generating reaction, but additionally, we are going to have to move electrons around. So we're going to talk about redox reactions as well. When we think about the evolution of early metabolisms, we think about prebiotic res or primordial respiration as a form of um, electron transport from a reduced source like iron 2 plus turning into iron 3 plus um, or hydrogen gas turning into protons. And then there are electron acceptors, things like sulfates and sulfites, um, perhaps nitrogen dioxide. Uh, oxygen was very unlikely to be a primordial electron acceptor because oxygen is a product of photoautotrophic uh, respiration. And so when we think about primordial, primordial respiration, it serves as a basis for all other forms of uh, metabolic processes. So we have a branch off when chlorophyll is invented to generate our first photocatalytic reaction centers. We have a branch off when retinol is formed to make our bacterial photosynthesis. And then we evolve further types of respiration, specifically as oxygen comes around, uh, organisms figure out a way to turn oxygen into water to act as an electron acceptor. So what do we think of when we think of our first forms of uh, chemoautotrophy? We think of something like methanogenesis, where we take CO2, um, and you can see the red words on this image are the way that the CO2 is re reduced. So CO2 keeps accepting electrons. First it turns into a formal, and then it turns into a methenol, and then a methyl, uh, sorry, a methylene, um, until we get to our CH4, our methane. So how this happens is a pretty complex process. So you can see that there's this large methanofuran that serves as our base molecule for this catalysis. Um, I have CO2 circled in green here. So CO2 binds to our methanofuran, uh, and we end up with a uh, formal group that's attached to our methanofuran. Uh, and then methanofuran turns into methanoterin, uh, which then gets turned into this methylenol group. Uh, the methylenol gets turned into methylene, uh, and then we end up with a methyl and finally a methane group. And so essentially we're doing this whole carbon reduction by attaching our CO2 to a single molecule and it going through subsequent rounds of accepting electrons until it ends up in its most reduced form, methane. So what do we think of when we think of an earlier form of reducing carbon dioxide into what we think of as usable carbon, reduced carbon, like the sugars or fats in our bodies. The mechanism for possible carbon fixation can occur on mineral surfaces. Uh, these experiments were specifically done on an iron sulfide surface or pyrite surface. Um, in these reactions, we take CO2 and we actually bind the CO2 to our mineral surface, here shown as a C, double, or C triple bond O. This mineral surface then is going to act kind of like the methanofuran did in our methanogenesis, where our carbon dioxide slowly accepts electrons until it turns into the observed products. Here, the observed products are formate, uh, methanol, acetate, and pyruvate. 
Uh, we don't see lactate in these processes. And this is actually really, really exciting because pyruvate is one of the main energy sources that we use to feed into our electron transport chain to generate ATP. And so if there's a simple uh, mineral bound version of methanogenesis to generate usable carbon, we think that we have a pretty good chance of recreating the actual primordial metabolisms, chemoautotrophy, um, in our labs today. The other question is how do these electrons really move once we have reduced carbon? Um, and what do we think of when we think of electron transfer? So when we think of modern redox chemistry, we have the image that you see here with a citric acid cycle that generates reduced electron carriers, NADH, FADH2. Um, and additionally, we get more of these from fatty acid beta oxidation, uh, from glycolysis, and from the degradation of proteins or amino acids. And so all of these feed electrons into our electron transport chain, which generates a proton gradient and gives us ATP. So essentially, we want to take these electrons, make a proton gradient that can then be used later to drive our ATP synthes synthesis. So what do we think of as our early redox chemistries, not like the modern redox chemistries that we see today? Um, one group has proposed, uh, Nick Lane's group has proposed, that in hydrothermal vents you could get systems where you have a very fine layer of minerals that could act kind of as a porous membrane or an electron transfer membrane between an alkaline hydrothermal vent and an acidic ocean. And so there's already an existing proton gradient across this with a pH of 6 in the ocean, uh, so that's a lot of protons at a lower pH, it's acidic. Uh, and in the alkaline system, there are very few protons. It uh, is at a higher pH, so it's basic. And with this proton gradient, we can actually take our electrons, transfer them through an iron sulfite, and, or iron sulfide, and push them onto our carbon dioxide. So we actually use the iron sulfide itself as the electron transfer mechanism, as opposed to something like NADH that we use in our modern cells. Uh, other proposed mechanisms are very similar, where we have hydrogen gas is donating our electrons uh, and pushing it onto something like carbon dioxide to make uh, formaldehyde, uh, and that formaldehyde could even go into our foremost reaction to produce sugars. Uh, and then maybe in later stages of evolution, once we have proteins, our hydrogen gas could, through iron sulfide, push electrons to a protein like ferrodoxin, uh, which is probably pretty relevant to our first metabolic systems in something like LUCA. And you can see that I have some half react or some electron transfer reactions shown. Uh, the first reaction is hydrogen gas. Uh, it's the half reaction of hydrogen gas turning into pro two protons and releasing two electrons. So we have an electron source from our um, hydrogen gas. We could also use an iron 2 plus and turn it into iron 3 plus and lose an electron from that. So when something loses an electron, we call it oxidized. So the hydrogen is oxidized in this half reaction. When something gains an electron, it's called reduced. And when we reduce something, it is going to usually have less double bonds and more um, hydrogen. So carbon specifically goes from CO2 to CH4, uh, as you see in the third reaction. Uh, we use the acronym LEO-GER to remind us that loses electrons is oxidized and gains electrons is reduced. LEO the lion says GER. And so you can see that in each one of our reactions, for example, the second reaction, iron sulfide is going to become um, iron disulfide and our hydrogen disulfide becomes hydrogen gas. And so our hydrogen gas is actually gaining, or our hydrogen sulfide turning into hydrogen gas is gaining electrons and our iron is being oxidized. In the case of uh, the formation of methane, we're going to oxidize our CO2 into our reduced, sorry, we're going to reduce our CO2 into our oxidized, into our reduced methane gas. And similarly, we go from oxidized ferrodoxin to reduced ferrodoxin by turning hydrogen gas into protons. So when we think about our overall evolution from what we think of as or is hypothesized as our first forms of electron transfer to what we see today, we think of starting very simply with something like iron reducing carbon, 
uh, in a very simple manner. Uh, and then we slowly build it up. So maybe we add some sulfur chemistry and then we add some additional thiols to the reaction. Um, and then we generate phosphates, as you see in D. Uh, and this acyl phosphate would be a precursor to something like ATP. Um, and finally, we couple our proton gradient with our redox chemistry and with our carbon metabolism to generate our extant or modern organisms. And so this is a full summary of what we think existed on early Earth and how that evolved into the metabolisms that we see today. Thank you.